So let's, let's, let's get started. So um, I want to welcome everyone to the, the January 13th meeting of the Economic Development Council. Uh, the meeting is televised and being recorded, and it's in accordance with, uh, you know, the, the rules and regulations of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Um, so uh, first on the agenda. Um, Dan, before we start with that, could I just, um, we have one of the items on the agenda is recognition, Southeastern Motor Sales 75th anniversary. Yep. And I didn't realize that Bert Lewis would be joining us. Oh, um, awesome. he, he brought this to the attention of the town. And so um, I, if you don't mind taking this Absolutely. out of the order. Absolutely, Bert. So let me, I'm gonna promote him as a panelist. Funny, Bert, we were thinking of you as we saw this on the agenda, right? You were top of mind, so. Okay. You're muted, I don't... Bert. Yeah, can you hear me? We can. Good morning. Okay, good. Good morning. Yeah, thank you for, uh, for doing this. Uh, you know, I'm involved, uh, you know, I've been a customer there. Since, so, uh, Bert, I I, the other board members may not, I, I don't think I sent this out to all the Economic Development Council board members. I sent it to Mark. I think you copied Mark Lamb. So if you could just give a little bit of background. Sure. Sure. I just want to explain why I'm involved in this. Uh, I, I'm a part-time worker there for the past six or seven years. I'm the sort of the IT manager. I do all the online correspondence and uh, I handle the website, et cetera. So, plus I've been a customer for over 30 years. I've bought many vehicles there. And um, so this is a big recognition. It's 75 years. I, I, I don't think there's another family run business in, in the area, not only Easton that have operated for such a, a length of time uh, continuously, so it's a you know it's something that they uh, are proud of, and I just thought it would be nice if the town could give them a letter or a certificate maybe, and maybe if we could uh, you could help me uh, determine how I can do the same on the state level. You know, maybe one of the legislatures would uh, be willing to do that, or or just exactly how you could help. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. It's just 75 years there, the same location in Easton. There's no other family-run business that's been in operation that long. So, so Bert, one one, please congratulate your team on on an incredible milestone. I was I was looking at the website earlier and had no idea that they had been at the same location for those 75 years as well. And um, what was it, 30,000 vehicles, including the, all the ones that you've purchased from them that have been uh, transacted over that period of time. So that's just, that's just awesome. There's been a lot. It's a, it's a tiny little office that they have, which if you drive by there now, they just had a, a new building constructed, a new office and, and yep. a waiting area. So uh, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's a big achievement. Uh, most second gen, you know, it's the second gen, Derek Gaultier, who's the owner now. Unfortunately, his mom <clears throat> has passed away over the weekend. Uh, she was part of the business too, but so he, uh, yeah, he's taken it to a whole new level and, and very few businesses survive, uh, sec, you know, the first generation, once the first generation goes, it's pretty much it. And, and he's taken it, he's picked it up uh, just just quickly. You know, he was ready to go off to college when his father passed away. He had worked there part time. This is back in the 80s. And um, for one reason or another, he, he stayed at the business, took the business over, and he's been running it ever since, you know, seven days a week. 24 hours a day he's, he's available and working there and he works hard and you know as a salesperson too I, I tell this to everybody he's he's the only owner that I've ever seen or been involved with that he, he sincerely takes every sale to heart 
every every customer, every you know, especially once a vehicle is sold, he makes sure that it's as perfect as possible before it's given to the customer. So there's not many uh, owners of dealerships that, that that do do things the way he does. And that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, let me know. Be glad to answer them. But whatever you can do, whatever letter goes his way he's got a brand new building this would be uh, a nice uh, addition to it we'll, we'll have it framed and put up there and uh you know he loves easton he, he's an oa graduate it's all his kids have gone to uh, uh oa so that's pretty much it well thank you bert so stephanie could we bring this back to the select board ask for uh, you know some recognition to southeastern motor sales um in celebration of the you know 75 years of service and um anything that we could do bert uh as a council if there's going to be an event or anything scheduled we'll we'll certainly want to participate and and help any way we can i don't know if anybody from the group has any any comments but i want i for one think it's great we've got a direct engagement from a local business highlighting you know a milestone achievement uh an employer you know someone that's been a, a part of the 138 corridor for for 75 years and um you know being active in the community is a is a great thing so our, our condolences as well for the for the loss of mom um please please share those as well bert yes i will i will so so yes the board um can ask the select board to recognize um bert i think also reached out to jody fulginiti as the chair yes. of the select board and um, what Mark had suggested was that the board vote to um, solicit or request a letter of recognition from the legislators. Um, so if you want to do that, on, I think it would be nice if the Economic Development Council made that request. Yeah, unless anybody has, a, has any ob objections, can I have a motion? Uh, so Bruce, moved. I think it... Uh, can I have a second? A second. And I'll do a roll call. Boyer. Here. Danielson. Um, aye. Oh. Strange. Aye. Spencer. Here. Whitman. Aye. And Smith, aye. Thank you so much, Bert. We really appreciate your time and, and helping promote a, a great business, a, a great member of our community. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Dan and, and everybody else. I appreciate it. Uh, we do. And uh, yeah, thank you. I'll leave you now and uh, we'll wait to hear from you folks, I guess. Thank you, Bert. Okay, take care. Bye. You too. Yeah, that was nice. Thanks for um, board, quarterback and that, Stephanie, and, and pulling that together. Yeah, uh, so that roll call vote reminded me that you didn't do a roll call for quorum. So oh, for quorum? you may want to do that now. All right, so housekeeping. Great, uh, you we'll didn't go. speak up. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm the newbie. I'm just going to sit in the corner and be quiet. There we go. <laughs> so I'll, I'll do the same. So, so as a quorum, uh, Boyer. Here. Uh, Danielson. Here. Strange. Strange here. Spencer. Here. Whitman. Here. And Smith is here. We have a quorum. So, so next on the agenda is is welcoming our our newest member, uh, someone that's really well known within the community. He does a a lot across the board. Um, you know, started with you, Greg, on the planning board, and you had already been serving for for years when I came on board. And I can only imagine how uh, how much more you do between um, you know different community events, outreach, and everything else. But absolutely thrilled to. To see you, uh, and especially in your your position as the the chair of the, the planning and zoning board, and um, I just want to welcome and, and thank you. And if you could just take a few minutes, and you know, I don't, I I think everybody may know you, but maybe um, maybe Matt and and John may have not have met you yet. But don't rue the day. No, I'm kidding. Well, well, thanks, Dan. <laughs> and um, you know, it's funny. A couple of years back, I was talking with Connor. One point, I thought. You know, I'm always pushing to, uh, for those, I'm, I'm, the, I'm on the uh, conservation, I'm sorry, I'm on the planning board, I'm uh, on the historical um, commission, and I'm also the planning board rep uh, on CPA, uh, and then a couple other boards that 
everybody on planning board uh, took a step back and I, I, I got to be on. So, um, but uh, having a unique perspective, being involved in all these boards, I thought one of the things we're really missing as a town at times is having these boards kind of working jointly together while keeping their independence, you know? So, and, and so much of what you guys work on at this, uh, this commission really overlaps with a lot of what we do at, at planning. And so I thought it would, I just thought it made sense to sort of dovetail the two so that, you know, as we're creating, we've been working for the last, you know, 10, 10 years or so to really amend a lot of our bylaws to become very, you know, business development friendly. Um, and um, I think we need to work on getting um, the word out more. And, you know, we, we, we know the developers, we know the property owners because we deal with them. Um, and we know some of the folks that are maybe looking to do things in town. And I thought, wow, just a natural marriage with this board uh, uh, to try to, you know, I, I, I don't know the solution yet, but eventually I want to come up with a way to have, have discussions on specific properties, but mm -hmm. while respecting, obviously, the privacy of those properties and not violating uh, public meeting law. So, well, you know, maybe I'll send Morse code with my eyes or something. We'll, fi we'll figure it out. But because uh, <laughs> uh, we, we've, we've put a lot of great zoning together uh, that give property owners lots of options. Um, and uh, now it's time to, to take advantage of that, you know, and, and, you know, talking, I wish I'd mentioned this when Bert was here, but again, trying to be the new guy who stays quiet. Ha ha. Right. If you know me, but you know, look at self just motors. For your, your, your yourself, your collaborative <laughs> yeah. self. That's right. But you know, look at that, that stretch of 138, you know, 138 is a unique road because it, it kind of, it's, it's like new Orleans, right? It's a checkerboard street. You know, it, it goes from, it, there's a business, section and then all of a sudden it's residential then there's an industrial section then all of a sudden it's residential so that that section down towards turnpike had been barren for years and of course that uh, t and m have that 40b going in with those 40 or so single family homes and southeastern motors has always been there but they just put up a fantastic new building um in fantastic in that it just you know it has a little um you know it has a little architectural thought into it and i'm a huge believer given what you know i design and build and do planning in, in my day gig. And, and, you know, I'm a, knowing that so much of our tax base is based on, on residential property. Uh, I think, and given the, the gifts that were given a century and a half ago, the, the, the more aesthetically pleasing and unique we make this town, the better because property values go up. And that's, that's really what it's all about. So I, I really appreciate when I see things like that are sort of, um, contagious you know someone puts up a new building well they did it. okay well we can invest a little more and that, that's what we're always trying to do right create new zoning to start new new fires so anyway so i'm i'm excited to be here thanks for having me and um i will promise to to keep things succinct whenever possible because <laughs> <laughs> dan did start with me and i think i saw your eyebrows raised a few times you know a decade back but i, I get long-winded oh, when a few i'm times. Come on. <laughs> I know it's it's great to have you here and you know continuing on with with the team and in this one specifically yeah John and, and Matt can can you guys just introduce your, your yourselves to Greg um sure um I name is Matt Whitman I have uh lived in Easton coming up on four years now I think and um been on the economic development committee the last I want to say two years it's honestly hard to remember um <laughs> So uh, been, um, my wife's originally from Easton, so um, love working with ADC to get more involved and get kind of plugged into what's happening in the town. And I guess I mostly worked on um, uh, revising our Think Easton website, which I think we'll be talking about a little bit more later in the meeting. But nice to meet you. I grew up in Whitman, so we're kindred spirits. All oh, right. sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and I'm Jonathan Spencer. I've... Um, been in Easton my whole entire life. I grew up here, born here, raised here, went to OA. Uh, now I live here with my family and uh, a very new member of uh, the council here. And I'm just excited to kind of get involved and understand. I, I listen, most of these meetings are learning for me still and trying to figure out how I can help. And, and, and I've just really enjoyed learning about all the things that that this group does and that all of these groups do. So it's, it's been really fascinating to me and I'm still just, uh, there's a lot to learn. So um, I'm excited to, uh, to be here and see how I can help. 
great. Well, nice to meet you. And and my youngest is named Spencer. So look at this. This the the synergy is just overflowing at this point. Overflowing. <laughs> So it's to your point, Greg, we're, we're talking about, you know, ways to communicate with the broader community. Uh, we're working on and Matt's leading the, the facelift for the, uh, the Think Easton website and a lot of the information that's going to be shared and driven and built from this, from this platform. So with, um, with that, Matt, I think it's a good segue to kind of uh, have you lead the discussion and, and update us as a group and let us know what yeah. we can do to help to support and move this forward. Yeah. Um... <clears throat> I want to uh, thank everybody. I got some really great feedback over the holidays. I think we had um, probably 10 individual submissions for, or close to 10 for feedback on the website. Um, so I really do want to thank everybody um, for taking the time and, you know, people who aren't on the call too, right? But who took the time to go through the feedback form and, and fill out feedback. And um, luckily I had some time over the holiday uh, after I was done shoveling snow and, you know, um, kind of synthesized all that. Um, it was really good to get um, everybody's perspective on what they think the website should be doing, what are the most important things for the website to do. Um, you can definitely, I think, speaking from experience, you can get tunnel vision on uh, when it comes to a project you've been working on for a while. And uh, it's good to get that outside perspective. I have a quick kind of two slides to show off um, that I can share my screen. Um, and, uh, you know, again, I think follow up uh, after this call with um, probably another another kind of like Excel sheet, um, Google sheet to to kind of fill in feedback. Can everybody see this um, very bare bones slide deck? So based on um, the feedback we got, you know, I, I kind of split the revisions here, and I, I have done some um, text revision already um, to kind of fit the future. Um, uh, sitemap, which uh, I will also share those those documents for feedback after the meeting, similar to what we've done in the past. But the principles that came up and again and again from everybody's feedback, when we think about what Think Easton should be doing as a site, we really want to emphasize a clear mission statement right on the homepage. Um, you know, what are we here to do? And I think the the what of the what really comes down to based on what people said. We're looking to connect users to information about um, not just the town of Easton, you know, more importantly, business development resources, um, information they need to, A, hopefully help them decide to open a business in Easton. And then once they've made that decision, um, information and resources from the town to make that a reality. So uh, cutting down on the amount of text on site, and, you know, we did a lot of work to kind of rework what was on Think Easton previously and, and built it out into um, a nice site, but uh, in, in hindsight, something that feels like a little bit like a Wikipedia article about the town. And so cutting down on the amount of text, um, kind of keeping those subpages simple uh, and uh, ideally uh, increasing the number of photos on the site in a corresponding way. Um, so whether that is, um, town photography that we have on file or, or photos we can take, you know, as the weather warms up and hopefully outdoor dining comes back and just showing off the town. Um, a lot of the images we have on the site right now are out of date just in terms of the point in time in Easton's development when they were taken, right? Like the homepage image, I think is still a rendering from before the farmer's daughter opened. So this is a really good opportunity as hopefully <laughs> we, we move into a spring where people can get back out and get back to things and start eating outside where we can really show up all the things that have opened and changed with photos. Um, and then obviously promoting the app. That came up again and again, promoting the app um, for users, for businesses. Uh, and uh, you'll see that reflected in uh, the second slide with the kind of proposed site navigation. So as far as needs, you know, beyond just um, feedback on copy, which is kind of a, a constant consistent need, um, which, you know, I'll post those documents for feedback, but everybody should always feel free to, um, you know, we can create a, a feedback bucket, a Google sheet, right, where people can feel free to just drop in thoughts anytime they have them, because the, the beauty of websites is it can be a constant revision and update process. We can always be changing it and making it better. Um, but the big things as far as like deliverables that I think we, we really need on this new, new version of the site, um, you know, what regional partner organizations should we link to? Um, 
you know, Metro South Chamber of Commerce, for example, right, um, Old Colony Planning Committee, right? What, what are the organizations we wanna make sure we call out for users who might click from the economic development page on the Easton Town website to think Easton and say, okay, well, where do I go next, right? We don't want um, somebody's session to end once they hit Think Easton, so to speak. We want to be able to drive them to places that are useful and helpful to them. So uh, in addition to that, what are the internal town departments or resources, guides that we should link on the site? Um, is that a case where we should host the same resources on our site in parallel, or should we you know, have external links that direct them to where they're hosted on the town website? I think that's an open question, but I'm sure there's a ton of really great resources and guides um, that we can share or share links to just to have them promoted in, in multiple places. Um, we've talked before, I think, about listing available parcels for development through a kind of GIS um, system. Stephanie, that might be something where we just, I just need to pick your brain about um, in the future, but I think that would be an amazing resource to list in the future, right? Um, you'll see it marked as, oh, sorry, go ahead. Um, we had a little app that did that. The challenge is um, getting the real estate agents to update, it, to or, update or, it or to have the capacity internally to be able to update it because that's really what's critical. It's not, it doesn't, okay. yeah, so. So the, so the parcel app exists, but what it relies on is up-to-date listing information. Yes, yeah. Okay. And we got, we actually called out to brokers to let them know, um, make them aware that it existed and that they could use it and that we asked that they keep it updated. We received a very positive response, but then th they just haven't done anything. Okay, well, maybe, I mean, if we can feature it more prominently on Think Easton and, and that could be part of a promotional push to remind them, I mean, right, especially yep. considering new businesses yeah. opening in Easton and how hot the residential market is in Easton, right? We're like, the town is in demand in a lot of ways. Um, right. So this could be a good opportunity to push that again. Um, and then in a similar vein, are there local events we wanna promote? You know, events from local businesses, from local organizations, uh, events in the area. Do we wanna host some kind of calendar? Uh, you know, I think we have seen as a result of the Kind of east and outside campaign a lot of the businesses in town have taken the initiative and hosted a lot of great events a lot of fun events they've done really cool outside the box things i think it would be great to be able to promote those in a, a central uh location on our site but but that is definitely i think those two right the available parcels and events that's going to require a little bit more work that's a, a tentative change for the future um so we look at the proposed site map here, um, really simplifying the navigation. And again, big focus on resources. We already have a lot of testimonials and videos on the site. I think that's a very natural place for them to live is under resources, but talking about town departments and resources for businesses, regional partner uh, partnerships and resources. Um, again, those are the two deliverables I think I will need the most kind of feedback and help on to collect a list of, but I think this is a perfect place to host it. Um, you know, easy link for a contact us form right on the, the menu bar, just for people to be able to submit um, uh, a communication. And a uh, corollary to that is where does that go? I'm not quite sure. How do we check that? Uh, how do we respond to that? And um, making the app, its own. Right now we have a nice page set up for the app, but it does live kind of within the navigation tree. So making it its own top level menu um, selection, uh, download the app or discover Easton app, something like that, right? And, and there's a, a page live on the website right now, which has information about the app, the visual guide to it. That's a section we can build out a little more. Um, and then um, really kind of condensing the text heavy pages that we have right now around Easton for residents, Easton for businesses, business strategy. Those are legacy pages that we kind of copied and updated from the quote unquote old site. So I think this is a good opportunity to condense and combine a lot of them 
um, keep those first two menu items in the navigation tree kind of light. Um, but you know, a quick overview of that kind of Easton by the numbers um, about the mission of our Economic Development Council, uh, our individual board member bios, um, and and really, you know, with an emphasis, I think on especially in about and choose Easton, with an emphasis on pictures as as much as we can get, um, especially as the priority development areas uh, continue to be developed and, and new businesses continue to open in those areas. So yeah, I, I as a follow-up, um, I will share the revised copy for feedback. Um, I think anybody should feel free to make suggestions or edits. Um, again, trying to keep it short and punchy. Um, you, you want to avoid people having to scroll a lot. Oh, Donnie just logged in. Um, uh, da, 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 um, a sheet for collecting both regional partner um, organizations right, as a, as a resource to be able to list for people and then town departments and materials that we should either list on our site or link to externally. Um, those are the really big areas of feedback um, that I'll need. And then photos, you know, if there are, um, I don't know if we have like town, town photos or um, photos we could use um, that have been taken more recently, but that's also something that we could maybe we look to potentially hire somebody to do in the spring, something that we could look to do ourselves as the weather gets nicer. Um, but those are um, the big, it feels like a lot of feedback, right? But feedback on the words, feedback on the images, and then um, I think really the most critical resources to uh, collect and show off for users of the site, both the town resources and regional resources for businesses. Any thoughts on sitemap, general philosophy, feedback you might have submitted in the forum or feedback you've thought of since then? Um, just kind of an FYI, one of the things we're working on, we had a doing, bu doing business in Easton guide a couple of years ago. It needed to be mm -hmm. updated that had started and then fell by the wayside. We're working on that again here in the planning department because that's a okay. really useful tool for people so that they understand um, you know, what kind of permits they may need, right. to contact, how to start the process. Um, and we also, I, I, and I think you mentioned this map, we on the Economic Development Council web page, there is a link on the left-hand side in that nav bar um, to resources for businesses. So, um, you know, that would be a, a great place to start. And I, I, I think the mass development link is there, but that would be another one to make sure we have available. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that, that business guide, once it's been updated, I think that that's like a perfect thing to feature, right? So like, yep. what are the steps from a high level that you need to take? To, to open a business. Yeah. So that's what I would want to know, because I, as, as a, um, an ideal user who knows nothing about opening a business in Easton, what's the information that I would need to know, right? Uh, any, any other thoughts, feedback? Again, like uh, this, I, this should be a continuous assessment feedback editing process, that's the beauty of this medium. So um, I will definitely you know, share all this information for feedback today um, after the meeting. And you know, please, please, please feel free to, to always submit feedback ideas that you know this website I think will succeed um, if we're all able to contribute our own perspectives to it as a board. Um, so I, I thank you in advance for, for the time, uh, I, I appreciate it. And I'll just say, Matt, if you need help with photography down the road, let me know. Yeah, that would be 
I'm happy to help with photography. I have all the tools. I mean, I do perfect. Commercial, I do commercials awesome. and photography. So, um, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I think all the gear that you could ever want, and uh, we can make anything happen yeah. photography wise. So, if we want, if you need help, just let me know. I'm happy to help. Happy to do it. Yeah, excellent. Thank you. Thank you so much, John. I I think that's perfect. I think we could definitely, you know, kind of put a pin in it until the springtime, but. I think there'll be a lot, a really good opportunity to kind of refresh some of the photography on the site with some of the new developments in town. Great. Another thought for pictures. I mean, we, we uh, in the planning department, because we need pictures for a lot of different things over time and, and materials and presentations. So mm -hmm. we kind of have a, a um, collection, but, um, and, and Tish was just suggesting using Instagram, but maybe do a solicitation from the public of their best pictures. And, you know, the, the good ones get to go up on the site and get some um, visibility and yeah. some like credit that. to the- Yeah, project. I was thinking about some sort of, you know, on the homepage right now, right at the, let me see if I can pull it up quickly. <clears throat> so can you, can uh, everybody see the, the kind of homepage yeah. as it exists right? Right, so we have like, this is a really good example of, of simplifying, right? Like we have this top menu bar here. Um, we have this nice logo. This logo isn't a link. It doesn't go anywhere. This should be a link to the homepage. This doesn't need to be here. Um, but also when you scroll down here, these links are just re repeats of what's already available in the navigation bar. Um, I was thinking about some sort of, right? A, you know, we could have a hero, some kind of big hero image here. Um, some kind of social feed would be cool here too. And, and mm -hmm. that seems like something we can maybe develop, right? Stephanie, exactly what you're talking about where people submit their images, local businesses submit their images and maybe they're, you know, we, we repurpose the like East and outside Instagram account or something like that, right? And it becomes a feed of like user submitted images that are obviously vetted and approved and credited to people, but like that's a nice way to make it feel more vibrant. Right, and this, yeah, you know, you can see in this image here, right, there's still a building next to the farmer's daughter that <laughs> doesn't exist anymore. So yeah, I will um, share all that information. I know that was a lot. Thank you um, for your patience. And um, again, thank you so much, everybody, who I saw a lot of feedback submissions like Christmas, New Year's. I really appreciate everybody taking the time um, during the holidays. It, super, super valuable. So thank you so much. And, you know, it's a continuing process. Uh, uh, we, it, the site will continue to get better, but I think this is um, going to be a good direction for us to head in. No, thank you so much, Matt. You're such a resource and such a talented member of our team that's helping pull together <laughs> something that's going to bring all of this together. So um, can't thank you enough for oh, thank you. Taking, taking the time and investing your time. above Definitely me. just a here novice mucking around in the back end of a website but i, I appreciate it I, I i enjoy doing it i you know it's a nice way to kind of apply some of the principles from my job in a, a more fun and local way so yeah always happy yeah well one thing that just comes to mind with especially with greg you know being a part of the board now is being able to highlight the proactive approach that the town is taking around zoning um, all the updates that we've made over the years and decades yeah. but importantly the ones that are being made to you know, help um, help promote, enhance projects, um, whether it's mixed use or whatever it may be. But I, I maybe Greg, if um, you know, not not for now, or maybe maybe for now. But um, you know, what could we weave into this to highlight all the advancements the planning boards made uh, through the town through town meeting to help position these districts to the economic development tools. So. I, I see it's it, the different districts are in the map, but, you know, highlighting some of the nuances yeah. that we've made, some of the improvements that we made to the, to promote growth, to promote the right type of growth is um, maybe an opportunity worth, uh, worth highlighting. Yeah, we have well, a, I, I a think brief... even I think even the fact that Easton does that and does update its zoning, I mean, Greg is always thinking about zoning and how it affects businesses and 
um, the growth in Easton. I was in a meeting this morning talking with an engineer who does a lot of work in some of our neighboring towns. And one of the greatest frustrations they have is the zoning is so old that they have to go to the zoning board of appeals for so many projects, mm -hmm. or you don't know if it, and, and you don't know if it's going to get approved or not. And we were talking about that they're also familiar with Easton zoning and the updates and you know, when we're faced with something, someone asks, is a use allowed? It's not just like, oh, gee, no. Um, it, it, you know, I, I always talk with Greg about, okay, this came up. It doesn't look like this use is allowed. Is it something that the um, town should be considering? So I think the proactivity of the board is um, also a benefit to businesses. Yeah, we have a. Right. You can you can contradict me or. Uh... No, I know. I was going to use the word proactive. That's the whole reason I wanted to. I thought, you know, planning should have a seat on here. Uh, is that Easton? You know, we. You, you always see people screaming online. You know, especially those opposed to housing. Oh, you know, Ren Rainham just got a five thousand, you know, five hundred thousand square foot facility from Amazon. We could have had that, but our leaders don't want it. They want how I'm like, no, Easton didn't get that because we don't abut a highway. You know, and there's just those of us who work in real estate. There's just especially this day and age, right? You know, so we Easton for a lot of parts isn't going to get picked up by the the scrubber apps that a lot of national development firms use. So we need to be proactive. I think taking, we, we have a great town. We have a great, there's, um, there's numerous, I'm preaching to the choir here. There's, there's great attributes to this town. And I'm hoping that we can sort of network our boards together so that uh, we can proactively go out and you know, find the projects that we're looking for. I think that's what needs to be done. You know, for example, we, right before COVID, we were very close to wrapping up a deal for a hotel in Easton. I won't talk of where the property was. I won't talk of the hotel, um, but it, it, it fell apart for reasons that really had nothing to do with Easton. And I think we still would have been able to circle back on it, but COVID certainly has blown that up for a while. Um, so, but I, I think um, our, we're positioned for really um, some excellent growth, some, some really unique opportunities um, with our three downtowns, which I'll, I'll babble on about more later. But yeah, proactive, that's, that's exactly the word I was gonna use. That's what I'm hoping um, I can bring to, to this. Yeah, and I, we have a, a slight section on town strategy, but that is something that could definitely benefit from more expertise, more fleshing out. I think that's, that's a, a perfect opportunity to um, be a little wordier, but to be, you know, put that kind of expert stuff out there. Yeah, so thanks again, Matt. Dottie, I, I, welcome. I don't know if everybody but our, our chair of the board of selectmen and, and member is, is joining us. So wanted to give you the floor for a second. If Sure, sorry I'm late. I had a meeting conflict this morning. So glad to be able to catch the tail end of it. And, you know, really glad that um, Greg is joining. I think that this is really, um, a great opportunity to collaborate and uh, work in the same direction. So I'm looking forward to this next new year on, on this team. So the, the next item that we have, and I am gonna go, I'm gonna skip the meeting minutes. I'm gonna save that for the end for housekeeping, but um, for the Discover Easton, uh, the, the media campaign, Stephanie, I don't know if there was a, a general update from from you related to this or? Yeah, yeah, Mark normally gives it, but in his absence. Um, so we've been meeting on a monthly basis with the East and Outside team. And as, so you've been getting regular updates. Um, the board knows that the idea was to start transitioning from East and Outside um, <laughs> at the time that was determined, um, you know, the COVID, numbers were going way down and people were going back inside and the campaign itself really had achieved what we were trying to achieve and that was letting people know that people, the businesses were open, they were complying with the health um, requirements and recommendations to help prevent the spread of COVID. And it was very successful. Um, and then through one of the, um, stimulus programs, Dottie had worked with us through the Old Colony Planning Council in developing the Discover Easton app. So the next phase was 
migrating from Easton outside to Discover Easton, getting people to change their posters over and, and doing the little videos there. Um, our meeting on Tuesday was lightly attended. Part of that is because some of the businesses are responding to the current wave of COVID cases. I guess uh, Neil wasn't on the call because McGuire's has been, had been shut down for at least a week, uh, maybe two. Um, and, and again, that could be because of cases or just staff out because of cases. Um, but in any event, we're trying to figure out how to re-energize the campaign. So it was just me, um, Gail Devins and Mark on the call on Tuesday. And Mark had suggested maybe creating um, one of those self-guided tours for people to discover all the wonderful opportunities that Easton offers people visiting, whether it's through the businesses, restaurants, um, activities, our open space areas, the historical um, and significant cultural assets that the town has and create um, an, an app that you could download. So maybe we can link this Dottie to the Discover Easton app as well. And someone coming to the town could listen to it and get a self-guided tour and learn more about the community. So that's, um, it really does need a little bit of um, energy. I think that again, the business owners that had been attending, we were really seeing um, good participation from the businesses. But again, that's waned a bit. I think that has to do probably with the um, constraint staffing that continues to be a challenge as a result of COVID and people not returning to work. Stephanie, I think that um, Ed Hands was working on something like that over the past several years of a guided tour. Yeah, I think I feel like one of the Eagle Scouts did a project for that as well. Um, it's, it's in the back of my mind, but I think I saw that somebody else was working on that. It's definitely something that could be connected to the app, but I think we should probably try to put a survey out there and see who else in the community is already working on this and can we collaborate and help get it across the finish line rather than starting from scratch. A lot of times that's what happens. We have a lot of really proactive people in the town that have these great ideas and they're working on them independently and then they find out about each other and um, it could be a good opportunity to pull people together to get that done. Yeah. So thanks, thanks Stephanie for that update. Um, kind of echoing what Dottie said, if there's anything that we can do that to help um, spur discussion or continue it or enhance it or participate, um, you know, let us know. Yeah, I think that's a good point. I mean, I was aware of Ed Hands. I didn't, um, but I, and now that you mentioned the Eagle Scout, I seem to think I heard something about that as well. I think that's a good idea to see what else is going on out there and leverage it. As far as the app, I can tell you that we have 785 people that have downloaded the app and 20 businesses have claimed their business, which I don't see that as, I, it's a low number, but I don't think it's bad. I just think that people's businesses are in there already and, and they may not necessarily care to claim them or not claim them. Um, I did have one person that reached out and said that her business was in there and it's no longer a business, could we remove it? So that was good. The word's getting out anyway. So um, we just have to keep talking about it and using it. Um, hopefully everybody here has downloaded the app, um, but. I, I use it for restaurants all the time to, because, you know, if I want to call or I want to see what's on the menu, rather than look up the individual restaurant, I can scroll through and get it really easily. My husband will be on his phone looking at the restaurant and I'll be like, oh, I already have it over here. So <laughs> it's, pretty, it's pretty quick to do that. Any stories, uh, any highlights, any, um, any successes that you've heard from the 20 or so businesses, Dottie, that signed up for the app? Um, well, they just claimed their site. That doesn't mean that all the businesses that we have in there um, are, you know, anyone can access them anyway. 
But I will say that Pinterest, when they just opened, or Pinspiration, I'm sorry, they just opened mm -hmm. up um, within the past few months during COVID, which is yeah. great that a new business would start during those times. And she said when she came to the licensing um, hearing, she said that she was getting inquiries because she was on the app. So Excellent. that was really great to hear. Excellent. So um, for the district updates, I don't know if there's anything to highlight between Quisit, Furnace Brook, the downtown or the village, but um, Stephanie, any general updates between any of the, the districts or any members have anything you want to um, want to highlight? I, I think that Greg, do you want to uh, talk to that? Um, well, you know, like I said, I, I, I was going to be the new guy who just stayed quiet in the room for a couple of meetings, but then, then I saw on the agenda, I go, oh boy. So, um, <laughs> and, and normally, you know, in the future, I'll, I'll share a screen with some graphics and all, but just very quickly. Um, and, you know, so uh, the Furnace Village districts, which we created last year, there's four different districts, basically run from uh, Target down to Five Corners. Um, and uh, we have our first um, project in the middle of permitting um, resulting from this district it's the 555 Foundry Street, which is the old, mm -hmm. the Belcher house, the, one of the, the Belcher family, you know, which, which had the Belcher Foundry, um, which someday will have a, a nice um, compact neighborhood uh, development on it. Um, part of that development, there'll be a, an intersection developed with lights at the intersection of Paquanicut and 106. Um, is also part of the mitigation package. They're going to be um, putting money towards the uh, engineering of that section of 106, you know, to include um, sidewalks and, and landscaping, hopefully in the next decade. Uh, so, anyway, so a developer has purchased uh, 555. And in long story short, in, in return for enhancing and preserving the history there, uh, I say enhancing because a, a lot of non-historical elements have been added to the exterior of the building. He's gonna pull that off. He's gonna trans, uh, transform it into a duplex. Um, and that coupled with, uh, there's a Swift Park, which may be created. There's a group, I believe, just starting to work on that at the, an old park at the end of Pequonicut. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, the same developer is carving off two lots for two architecturally correct federal style homes um, on 15,000 square foot lots, which are now um, uh, allowed in that district. So what we're hoping to do there was to create some, some residential opportunities to continue to develop a sort of a walk walkable neighborhood and sort of lighting that fire that we talked about before. Once it starts, you know, Stephanie and I have met with or had conversations with at least six other property owners in the districts who I know um, some will be coming before us very soon. Um, and some are just in a sort of a schematic stage, but I, I think we'll see some, some big changes coming there in the next year or so. And when, when appropriate, certainly we'll, we'll, we'll share those. And um, then we have the Cuisa Commercial District, which was passed um, seven or eight years ago, I think originally. Mm -hmm. That's basically 138, you know, from, from Stone Forge down towards Dean Fuel. And uh, there's really three large properties there um, that can really help carry that district. Korea's Plaza, the marketplace, and possibly uh, what I'll call El Mariachi Plaza. And I, I just say, those are the ones that, that, that have large tracts of land, uh, relatively speaking, that could take take real advantage of, of the zoning. We approved uh, a special permit probably two years ago uh, at Korea's Plaza. Mm -hmm. And uh, for reasons that, that have been, that have become public that, that, that has to, that didn't quite come to fruition, um, but the property owner is working with, um, uh, working with some folks and, you know, we may see a, a, a nice um, transition to a slightly different development uh, in the very near future. Um, and, and again, I think once of the, once one of those properties goes that it's really gonna, uh, you know, 123 has been already filled out through Brockton. So one, that 138 stretch really is ripe and the tools are in place for a multitude of, of different uses granted, you know, br bricks and mortar have been dying for quite some time and probably exacerbated by uh, the rush online brought on by COVID, but they'll, they'll, you know, this, this new generation that some of you youngsters in the audience represent will We'll come up with some some new uses. I've always thought, you know, for example, shared workspaces, which you know have been big in the cities for the last few years. I, I think 
you'll see some some you know small version of that maybe come out this way and help with some of our commercial spaces because now that people are working from home yeah still still need to get out of that house now and then so you know maybe something along those lines and then the village business district which we think of as, as downtown you know the old northeastern village uh one recent development that well we a year ago we um change the the ratios or the numbers to allow a uh, mixed use or, or multifamily you know again try to bring in it's already a walkable neighborhood we're trying to bring in a little more you know some more residences um again not huge numbers you know people always people that are anti-growth will, will always oh they're ru ruining the town no no we're, we're creating opportunities to enhance this this wonderful town um so the lincoln street school um which doug king and his companies own I think had what originally 44 units maybe or so anyway so, so they mm -hmm. they um purchased the gym from the the ymca and they're putting i believe eight apartments in there um so just another you know and and there may be some projects coming before cpa in the next couple of months um which will um, add on to work um you know to, to the possibilities of downtown so you can see those are the, the three downtowns we've always been trying to develop they now have the sewer um and I would like at a future meeting, um, when I have more time to prepare, bring in some graphics and we can talk uh, much more, uh, you know, pinpoint about the strategies and the opportunities there. Yeah. And um, I think, you know, even developers, you know, Stephanie and I will meet with property owners or potential purchasers all the time. And what do they always say? Okay, what can we do here? You know, we're really positioned well because folks, we've put everything through a special permit, which means it's not by right, but boy, if you, you know, work with us, you can get something great. And, you know, and, and we're, you know, you know, my thought is I'd be the dead horse, but I'm always like the, the smoother we make the process for the property owner, obviously respecting all of the rules and regs that are in place by the, the different boards, but the smoother we make the process, the more we can get for the town, be it, you know, open space, um, you know, mitigation, you know, you know, anything, you know, all with an eye towards everything we do really is an eye towards economic development, because we're never going to get away from a residential tax base in this town, given we don't have a highway. So that's what we're all. So anyways, those, those are what we're focused on. And like I say, I'll, uh, you know, at a future meeting, I'll, I'll bring in something um, a little more graphically impressive. That's awesome, Greg. It'd be great to, um, you know, carve out some time at a future meeting and, and, and highlight one or all uh, of the great work that we're, we're doing. So thank you so much. Sure, thanks. So we, we recognize Southeastern Motor Sales, Dottie. Uh, Bert joined us earlier on the call, 75 years of service. We've got some, um, you know, some support work to do over the next couple of days leading to their, their milestone anniversary. Uh, we've got meeting minutes, so just some housekeeping. Could, um, if everyone's had the opportunity to review the meeting minutes from May 13, November 18, and December 9 of 2021, um, get a motion to, to approve the slate to be, we've had some of these um, minutes lingering out there. So I don't know if anybody hasn't had time to review, but it'd be nice to get that. That cleaned up. I'll make a motion to accept the slate. Have a second. Second. All right, I got um, Dottie and Dottie and John. So uh, Bruce. Yes. Danielson. Yes. Uh, Greg Strange. You want I'll to abstain. Um, Spencer. Yes. Whitman. Yes. And Smith is yes. And me is yes. You forgot me. Oh, sorry, Dottie. Sorry about that. And then just general outreach and support. We have small business Saturday promotions listed. I don't know if there's any any particular yeah, to highlight, it, but the, um we really didn't over the last month, maybe because of the holidays, um, mm -hmm. really have a lot of promotion um, activity. And we've got the, the Discover Easton support that we've discussed. The, the Mass Life Science Center has a tax incentive program that, that we've got highlighted here. Yep. I don't have any particulars yeah. to that, but if there's a, a link or in any um, any resources to help folks that are listening in locate that if they're interested, Stephanie. I'm sorry. The if Massachusetts Life Science Center yeah. tax there, incentive program. Link right, there is a link for um, on the Economic Development Council webpage to that program. So that, again, that's um, to encourage and um, aid 
businesses that are supportive of the life sciences. We've got our council's annual report to the town administrator's office that I'm sure we'll be working on over the, the next couple of weeks. And we've got our next scheduled meeting for um, for February 10th. So I don't know if there's any open items from the, the team that they wish to discuss, but appreciate everybody's time. I do know um, Dottie did, uh, uh, Dottie? Yes, I just wanted to say quickly, we have an opening on the Conservation Commission and uh, we're getting ready to wrap up the, uh, the volunteers to take a look at that. But I just wanted to ask this group, if you know anybody in Easton that wants to be on the Conservation Commission, think about that and tell them to get their names in uh, as soon as possible. And what I would say about that is, it's really important that that commission, you know, they're a big part of our economic development process. And we don't want somebody on that commission that is anti-housing or anti-development or anti-business. And we also don't want somebody on there that's let's throw out all the rules and be, you know, not think of the conservative nature of it. We need somebody that is thoughtful about the pace of growth and the rules that we want to do for protection and following the rules and making decisions and helping businesses and residents get to yes. So um, if you can think of anybody that that would be good at that. Um, I'd really love to hear from them. And you can reach out to me directly if you want to brainstorm ideas. So, um, and okay, then I'll do it. No, just kidding. Awesome. Craig, at the beginning <laughs> yeah. of the meeting, you almost said you were part of conservation, if you remember correctly. That's a Freudian slip, believe me. <laughs> <laughs> and I just wanted to mention that there are, when we we're talking about the three different areas, um, we have some new businesses, the Starbucks that's being built down in the Target Plaza. Mm -hmm. um, Pops just came before the select board the other night that he's transferring some ownership over to his sons, which is really incredible. And it just shows, I love to hear the success of a, a small family business. They've all, they all work in the store together. And oh, Pops? Know. Yeah. It's oh, I a, love it. It's a it's wonderful the best. transition. You know. It's the best. Oh, that's great. And then in the um, Quisa Corridor, Dream Machine Laundry and Elliott Physical Therapy are in like right on the corner of Belmont and Washington Street. And um, in the downtown, we did the paving and, and extended the sidewalks to make it easier for business and added some parking. So that's really working out good. There's a couple of little speed bumps in there. So that's hoping to slow down traffic a little bit. And um, a lot, you know, to see these new businesses coming out right now is really makes me so happy that they're choosing Easton. Yeah. And um, I, I think we should probably think about, I don't know, we talked about this at one time, doing a welcome packet for them. So we should be giving them, you know, the flyer for Discover Easton to get them set, you know, have them set themselves up on the app. And also just a list of resources and get their contact information so that when we do want to reach out to them, we know how to get in touch with them. That's it. That was awesome, Dottie. Thanks for highlighting all that. A lot of great things going on here in Easton. One, I'd be remiss if um, we lost a member of our community, uh, someone that was really special to a lot of folks here on the on the call today, Carolyn Cole. Um, incredibly kind spirit, volunteered a lot behind the scenes, uh, was very generous with her with her volunteerism and her friendship to many of us. So, you know, extending our our condolences to to Carolyn's fa Carolyn's family, and um, I know that. Uh, a lot of sad people in in town uh, mourning the loss of someone that was you know really just a genuinely good person that did a lot of things behind the scenes that was was great for for so many so um i don't know if everybody's heard but yeah she caroline passed away um i think over the weekend how do you you had sent me the text i think no it, it just last week last week yeah, she, uh, she was the chair of the cultural district and uh, really uh, a champion of tourism and uh, arts and culture. So she will definitely, yeah. be. thanks for recognizing her, Dan. Yeah. Um, hope everybody has a great rest of the week, great rest of the month, stay healthy. Motion to adjourn. Right. <laughs> Second. Motion to adjourn. Take Second. care, everybody. Bye, all. Right, thanks, everybody. Down.